so then later other programs should be able to place stuff in there. That should not take too long. Um, what's happening now in the background is kind of unpacking this, it's computing over the entire uh, file, extracting um, the contents, and then uh, in this case, copying them into the user local. Um, so now if we do a Go version, it doesn't know, um, it doesn't um, find it yet because it doesn't know where to look. It doesn't know where this go path is. Um, and there are these commands here that tell it where to go. Um, I think actually this is the only one that we need really to run go version, yes. But we need the other two to then also be able to tell it where to install new programs. Um, and we can apply these once, but if we were to exit our um, command, our terminal, and go back in, then it will have forgotten about them. Um, so to make them permanent, we're adding them to our uh, bash rc file. And this bash rc file is a file that contains a lot of configuration options for this terminal. Um, there's also some fun things you can do with it. So maybe we'll do something later. Somewhere in here, for example, you can change the colors of, of what this looks like. Uh, one popular thing that people do is they replace here. You can see in the, um, uh, you can see here on the left, there, it, it's, a, it's just a common convention to have a little dollar symbol in here. But of course, you can just replace this with a Bitcoin symbol too, uh, which I think is quite fun, um, but which also causes some problems. So um, here at the very end, I'm just going to paste this in. And so now every time we log into this terminal, it runs these commands. It runs the entire, all the commands that are in this bash rc file. And now go version should uh, show us uh, where go is and what version we have installed. Uh, so now we don't need to remember how to type this. So every time we log in, it's going to be there. The final fun step is going to be the install um, Lightning um, Terminal. Um, which we're going back into our Git directory, right? So this is already here. In this case, there's Bitcoin in there, there's Lightning Terminal in there. Um, and I already have Tor in there, and though, although um, we're not going to install this from source unless you really want to. The command is also kind of copy paste, copied in here. I can already show you uh, what, this, what the code looks like and where this command comes from. Um, so here, github.com slash lightning labs that's where all the that's where all the code lives that lightning labs has published and one of them is lightning terminal which somewhere here um here this is the ui for which we needed node.js and yarn and here's um all the software it, used, it includes and once we click here on code then we have the option to um, paste it here as well um, or paste it from a command here. So this command really just downloads all of the uh, all of the code, the raw code um, already exists because I tested this before. Yeah, to delete this, I also need to be the super user. If you have any questions, then you need to speak up because I'm not gonna like see your see your writing. Um, I clone it, clone it into terminal. So you can see it's um, not, not super big, but it is going to include a lot of uh, later when we compile it, um, we're going to have to um, continue to download a few other stuff. But this is all happening in the background. The next step, which is one that is very easy to overlook is the git checkout. Um, if you don't run this git checkout command, then you're going to be compiling the absolute latest version of the code, which you cannot assume is tested, which might not be 100% complete. It is always going to compile. That's a requirement that Lightning Labs has for publishing code to main. Uh, but only the releases are properly tested. And so here's zero point. Um, in this case, we can also um, 
here look with the um see what else is in there the zero dot and then here we can see all the versions um, so sadly they're listed alphabetically and not numerically so then version zero 10 comes after version one and before version two. Uh, but that's just way, something we have to get used to. And we can then, um, we just pick the highest number from these, which at the moment is 0 010. I think already in a few days, it might be version 10.1. Um, we are going to do a separate instruction on how to update all of this stuff. But the update uh, mechanisms are very similar to the installation mechanisms. So they're not going to be any surprises in there. Um, so we check this out, and now it tells us we're switching um, to version 10. So now the code, as we download it, is, is in the state of um, the version uh, 0 0.10. And if you have already run this, then you might want to check, check this again, because it's something that I only updated like two days ago, um, this make command. Um, so make, uh, we've seen that before when we installed Bitcoin, it's just a utility that helps us uh, compile code. Uh, but we're appending this here with go install, which tells us specifically to use the go install, uh, ins, uh, go compiler. Um, it would totally work without it, by the way. So it's just a little bit slower, a little bit less efficient. Uh, but we need, we need the second one um, to also have the command line interfaces. Um, and if you have already installed um, LitD, but you're missing these com these command line interfaces, I'll tell you later how to how to check for those. Then you will need to run this again. Um, and I hope this will not take us too long here, um, since I've already run it once. It might um, run a little bit faster. But now what it's go doing, it is going to go through all these dependencies and download these dependencies and then compile these dependencies. And then it's going to make uh, multiple programs. It's going to make LitD, which is Lightning Terminal. It's going, which includes LND, Loop, uh, Faraday, and Pool. And then it is going to separately make the command line interfaces that are used to interact with these programs. So Loop is a program that lets you perform on-chain to off-chain swaps. For example, let's say you open a channel, 5 million sats with a, uh, let's say with Wallet of Satoshi, and you want to have, now you have 5 million sats in this channel. Um, now, what if you want to swap 2 million sats in that channel for an on-chain payment? Then you're able to use Loop to make this payment in a non-custodial way so that you won't. So of course, you could theoretically, this is what people used to do. Uh, you could just open your own account on Wallet of Satoshi and send 2 million sats into that account and then make an on-chain transfer from Wallet of Satoshi back to your Lightning Wallet. But in this case, Wallet of Satoshi is going to uh, charge you a fee. And for a very short time, Wallet of Satoshi has a have, yeah, it's custody over your funds. If they shut down exactly in that second, then you're screwed. And loop, uh, I'm going to um, mute whoever is. How do I do that though? I'm going to mute you. Sorry. The, and it allows you to do that in a non custodial way. So it uses very similar principle to how lightning payments work in general in that it makes a payment to the loop node a lightning payment to the loop node under the condition that or rather the other way around like bloop makes an on-chain payment to you that you're only able to claim if your lightning payment to loop succeeds so the pre-image that you make the payment to um, is the same pre-image that is used to claim the on-chain payment. So that uh, is verifiable and helps you make this payment in a way that either
both the Lightning payment and the on-chain payment are going to fail, or both of them are going to succeed. Pool, on the other hand, is more of a marketplace for liquidity. And so one of the big uh, downsides of the Lightning Network is that there are yeah, li liquidity issues. Your channel over 5 million sats is only able to send payments of up to 5 million sats. And if you want to receive payments over the Lightning Network, then you have to also have an incoming channel. Um, and that can be quite, yeah, that can be quite uh, a limitation. Um, now, how do we best solve these limitations? And the uh, best approach is usual free markets. Uh, well, how about we price this? How about instead of relying on goodwill or in on relying on some central authority, we create a marketplace where you can signal your desire or your need for here you can see all the pool uh, all the pool stuff is currently being compiled um where you can signal your desire and your need to have an inbound liquidity and so now you place a uh, a bid and on that bid you say i'm willing to pay whoever opens the channel to me um the following sum and we can calculate calculate the sum as a um yeah as a, as a percentage of um as a percentage of the capital in that channel. Um, so then multiply it over how large the channel is and over how long the channel is going to be active. So then we can calculate um, how much you would have to pay for a two week channel or for a three month channel um, versus 1 million sat versus 10 million sats. And the other way around too, if you have a, a routing node, of course there's some limitations, there's some vetting criteria of who can, uh, of who can open a, um, a lightning channel there. But if you have some, if you have a functional routing node and you have some extra capital lying around, then this is also a way for you to uh, kind of um, get paid to open channels to other people. Uh, so now um, let's hope this worked. Um, so we can test this in two ways. We can test LitD. Well, LitD actually doesn't have a version thing. Um, but at least here it tells us like unknown flag version. At least it tells us that it doesn't tell us that it doesn't know what lit D is. Um, but lit CLI uh, version, uh, we can also try. So these are all the command line interfaces. This is the one that uh, is used for L and D. Um, so we can also check that this is installed here. Uh, so L and CLI version 0.16.2 better. Um, that's the L and D version that's inside here. Uh, we can also look at loop version, loop version 23, pool version uh, 0.6.2, and Faraday, does it have a version flag? Faraday um, is not in there. It's called FRCLI, not Faraday. Okay, Faraday is in there with version 0.2.11. So that all worked. Um, we can also already run litd at this point. If we just type litd, that just executes um, litd. In this case, um, we need at least, we need a configuration file to be able to run this. Uh, so let's do that next. Let's see if we are missing something here. No, we don't. Um, so the next guide, we're going to um, configure configure L and D. And to do that, we also need to configure Bitcoin. Um, and so our Bitcoin file is always going to be in this location. It um, currently has this uh, daemon flag, um, the data directory, how it's pruned. And I've also, I'm a big uh, full RBF maximalist. So I also put that in here. Um, the What we need for LND is uh, these things. So we need to enable remote procedure calls. So LND needs to connect to our Bitcoin D node um, using RPC. And by just defining the username and the password, uh, we're going to enable RPC in this case. But we are not going to use the defaults and we're not going to trust ourselves with coming up with a good password in our brain. Uh, but we are just going to. Um, create here a good password and maybe maybe first for a for a username 
let's pick this one. Click away the ads, terrible. Who came up with this? No thanks. And can I paste this? No, I cannot paste this. This is also a weird thing that, yeah. RPC user is this one. And for the password, we're going to be choosing um, I'm actually going to just save it here. I'm going to paste the, the password just in here, or the username and the password later too. Let's pick something a little bit longer, even though it doesn't really matter that much. Because we'll need that later again in our um, configuration file for LND. Um, but this one, we can just keep that defaults. Uh, this is just defines the port number and where to listen to uh, for ZMQ. And ZMQ allows, so it's also a way for LND Connect to Bitcoin um, and get all the latest, kind of like a stream, all the latest blocks and all the latest. Um, and that uh, should already be it. Um, so all we have to do here is Control O, Enter to save, and Control X. We also have to shut down uh, Bitcoin. Here, Bitcoin hyphen CLI uh, stop. Yeah, because we changed this already, it doesn't know they're correct. So we can just kill it by rebooting it. Um, sudo reboot now. This will just restart the computer. I should have uh, stopped Bitcoin D before. But killing Bitcoin that way is also not like it doesn't cause any harm. Um, all I have to be prepared now is that Bitcoin won't be running as I open this, and it might take a few seconds or a minute. Um, I can already um, talk about what I'm going to do next in here. This in this basic configuration. Um, so this basic configuration, what's miss? What's mainly what's missing is how others are going to be able to connect to your node, uh, because that largely depends on whether you have the node um, accessible over ClearNet or over um, Tor. So that took an unusually long time to reboot, but who knows what uh, it was doing in the background. Um, so I'm going to start Bitcoin D again. Bitcoin Core starting, I can also Watch this, which is sometimes fun. No, that's not Bitcoin debug. Uh, so here you can see it's, uh, yeah, looking at the first. Now it's, the next thing is going to verify the latest blocks that it downloaded here, the last six blocks. Um, so that's all good. The configuration file we're going to place is in the directory lit, which stands for Lightning Terminal. Already exists, lucky me. And I'm going to create this config file with lit.nano, lit.conf. And here again, I can just paste this in. Um, so the basic configuration for the UI password, um, again, you'll need a custom, a custom password. We can just make a new one here. So don't share these with others. Don't be like me and uh, just have your screen recorded and uh, then publish this on YouTube. Um, so before I really make this node functional, I'm going to need to go in again and change it. The alias, alias is something that's uh, definitely fun to set. Um, that's just a name for your own node. You can freely choose it. You can also put emojis in there. The color uh, isn't really, I don't know why exactly a node needs to have a color or has a color. Um, it's also very rarely seen that these colors are really used. You can just type in anything here, or leave it empty. But most importantly, we need to define that this is a Bitcoin LND node, uh, which is uh, also a bit of a blast in the past because the first LND was actually for Litecoin, 
um, not because LND is built by Litecoin maxis, uh, but rather because Litecoin was the first um, real cryptocurrency that had SegWit uh, enabled, and SegWit was a precursor to the Lightning Network. Uh, so the first software that was being built for Lightning was built on Litecoin. And then for a while, you could run the Lightning Network on both Bitcoin and Litecoin. Uh, today, you can only run on Bitcoin because there's been pretty much no development on Litecoin whatsoever. Um, the, it is still relatively common to have a, bit, a Lightning node for mainly for testing that is not on mainnet, but um, we're, we're not going to um, bother with testnet. We're going to go straight to mainnet. It is mature enough, even though um, it is still considered better software. The Bitcoin node, so we're using Bitcoin Core in the background, uh, but that's also not um, not taken for granted. Um, in the early days of the Lightning Network, Bitcoin D didn't support a lot of this functionality that Lightning needed. Uh, so people were using um, either their own forks of Bitcoin Core or BTCD, uh, which is a Go implementation of uh, Bitcoin Core and still uh, LND heavily relies on BTCD for a lot of its wallet functionality. Then here, where to connect to um, the RPC host. And then here for the username and password, we need to make sure that we type in the exact same username and password as uh, we did in our Bitcoin Core configuration. Um, and the bottom here, that's also can just also just leave the defaults uh, as long they just have to be the same ones as what we typed in to the Bitcoin Core. So we can theoretically also define different ports, but I don't have don't have a benefit in that. Um, so we save this and we exit, and um, now uh, let's test this. We can also make let's maybe make sure. So I'm not entirely sure this is going to work because LitD will at some point at least, demand that Bitcoin Core is synced. Um, so since my Bitcoin Core is not synced yet, I cannot guarantee that this really is going to work. Um, but here it does, um, at least for now. It might shut down later. Um, so if your, um, if your Bitcoin Core is synced, and you can see, and you see this, um, then you would be able to already create a wallet. Um, so um, I can uh, I can give you a bit of a spoiler of what to do here. Um, the trick here is to have a second window. How do I? Um, I need to. I remember the IP address of this thing. Here, message 172.81.0. No, that misses the username. And in this case, we can now use the command lncli. So while it's running here on the left side, we can use on the right side the command lncli create um, to give it a password. I'm just going to um, I'm going to make another password. Again, I'm going to have to change nuke the directory later. But here I can enter this password. I confirm it. And it's going to ask me to create a new seed. Yes, I do want a new seed. Um, I know it. It asked me if I had a new seed. OK, just abort it. Should have always read the instructions precisely. So we type in our password. And then he has to ask us, do you have an existing Cypher seed? So I do not have an existing Cypher seed. Um, here, n to create a new seed. I can give it a passphrase, uh, which I'm not going to, but uh, which you may. But then you also have to back up the passphrase somewhere. And this is then my 24 words. Now, what happened here? Yes. So now it's it created that wallet. It opened it. 
um, it shows us, okay, this is a Bitcoin wallet. Um, this is connecting, waiting for, waiting for the wallet to be unlocked. Okay, great. Um, and now my guess is not much is going to happen because the L and D wallet will wait for Bitcoin to be synced before it syncs itself. But at least it tells us that it's able to uh, it's able to connect to Bitcoin D via ZMQ. Uh, so that's great. Um, if we had some configuration problems here in Bitcoin Core, I would uh, I'm pretty sure they would show up in this step. Um, if you so in this window, um, the lit D process is now running in the foreground, meaning if we were to, for some reason, here, in this case, we can run lncli get info. Yeah, not ready to accept calls, but at least it tells us here that something, you know, at least we get an error. Um, but if we were to close this terminal here, um, then lit D is actually, here it tells connection refused, um, lit D actually stops working. Um, and to prevent that, we're going to have to run lit D with a different, slightly different command. Um, so if you just type in lit D, then lit D is running. But if you type in no hub lit D, then now lit D should run somewhere in the background. Can, I'm tapping top to kind of see the. I'll check that. I'll put that in the guide exactly on how to how to run it. Um, is LNG now running? also always check the logs. No, we shut it down. Oh, it, uh, it did start, but it crashed because, most likely because it wasn't able to connect to um, Bitcoin. Um, yeah, I have to wait for Bitcoin D to sync before this can properly work. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to show you how to install Tor. And I think Tor is useful to have for everybody here. It is not necessarily important that you are reachable over Tor, but it is very useful to be able to reach others in Tor. So if you're running your node at home, um, then most likely you're going to be reachable over primarily over the Tor network. If you have a static IP uh, at your home or in the office and you're willing to expose it, then this uh, then you don't need to be reachable over Tor. Um, so definitely, if you're running it in the cloud, um, being reachable over Tor isn't very important. But what is important is to be able to reach others um, in the Tor network, because it is still the, the primary way through which nodes um, connect to each other especially since so many nodes are running at home. Um, so we're just going to use, there is also a way to um, to install it from Tor's, uh, to, from hey, Tor, which, yeah. Sorry, um, if I'm installing Tor, would I install it on my Luna node or would I install it on my computer? At You'll install it on your new Luna node. Luna node, okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, so the, the machine that is running the, uh, that is running the Tor node, uh, that is running the Lightning node also needs to run Tor. Then the um, so I'm gonna do the the easy um, the easy command sudo apt install tor. Uh, so Eric and I tested this, and it actually is a fairly well updated repository. Um, if you want the absolute latest tor, then sometimes uh, it's better to install it from source. This should be fairly easy and fairly fast. Only fifteen point three megabyte of um, data. They needed to be downloaded. So now they're being installed.
yeah, we've got, I'm going to skip all this. Um, and now Tor is installed and should already be running. Um, and we're not even going to specifically test this. We're just going to go to the next step and try creating a hashed password. So this is Tor's way of handling um, hash uh, passwords, which is actually a fairly uh, secure way, uh, something that Bitcoin and LND don't do. Um, so you remember that when we um, that when we told Bitcoin to be reachable for LND for LND, then we pasted this password both into the Bitcoin configuration file and the LND configuration file, meaning that whoever has access to the Bitcoin configuration file um, also is able to connect to it. And Tor doesn't want to do this. Tor says that if somebody were to be able to access this Tor configuration file, then all they should see is the hash of a password rather than the full password. And um, that means, though, that for us, we have to create this extra step of um, making another password ourselves and hashing it. Um, so here, maybe I should have labeled these. This is my Tor password um, that I type with the command Tor hyphen hyphen hash hyphen password. And now as the, um, as the output of this, I should be able to get the hash of this password, which I also copy. And now I edit the configuration file. So th this configuration file is also lives in a part of the computer that is um, kind of restricted or privileged to the super user. Um, so we need to append sudo to be able to open this. And this configuration file comes pre-filled with a lot of stuff. Um, some of them are enabled by default. Some of them we might use later. Um, for now, the only two things we need is we need to find, so by default, yours is probably going to look like this. Um, and you will need to find the line that says control port 9051. And you need to remove the pound sign, meaning to uncomment it. Uncomment mean you turn it from a comment. All these things here that starts with uh, pound signs and are, um, and are marked in this, um, yeah, and this um, lapis lazuli color, this has a name, um, the color. Uh, and those are considered comments. So the configuration file, kind of as it's being read by the program, ignores all the comments. And we uncomment it, meaning we um, remove the pound sign. And then the program will um, start reading it. So this first hashed control password up here is going to be ignored by the program. And only the one that we start writing here without the pound sign is going to be um, later used. Uh, and then we just copy paste the entire thing, even the thing starting with 16. Um, and that is all we need to do. Um, later on, we could also use, this is a very useful utility. This allows you to create hidden uh, service directories, um, but LND is going to do that for us. But maybe later, for example, for Bitcoin D, maybe we want to um, create another one so that others can connect to our Bitcoin node over Bitcoin D. It's especially useful service if you have a full archival node. Anything else interesting in here? Um, if you want to run a Tor relay um, at home, um, maybe consult a legal professional first. But generally, a Tor relay is nothing problematic. And an exit node is in Tor what's considered the legally difficult thing because sometimes your service provider will hold you liable for the kind of content that is being downloaded and uploaded through your connection. Um, but we're not going to configure any of this, um, even though it would be a very useful service to Tor. And um, to make this configuration file valid, we need to restart Tor, which also um, goes very quickly. Now, in the next step, um, we need to tell LND to use Tor. Um, and for that, we need to go back into our configuration file, lit.lit.conf. I'm going to make a new chapter in here called uh, Tor configuration. 
and I'm going to again paste this in here. Um, this is a password I generated um, before that shouldn't be in there. We're going to use the raw password in this case. So the hash goes into the Tor configuration file, and the raw password goes into the LND configuration file. So LND listen. Um, Technically, this is not the Tor configuration. Um, technically, this could go somewhere else. But LND listen will just mean listen to incoming connections. Allow others to connect to your node. Um, that's not a prerequisite to running a Lightning node, but it's a prerequisite to letting others open channels to you. Um, and here, we're telling it that um, Tor is active. We're telling it to use the SOX proxy, meaning um, we're telling it to make outgoing connections also through Tor. This is important if we want to reach other Tor nodes or if we want to reach, um, uh, if we want to hide our IP address. Uh, and here we're telling it how to reach the control um, port. So the control port is where LND can kind of ask Tor, please make me a hidden service, for example. Um, and here in the last line, we're telling it, to create a version three onion address. So those are the latest version of the .onion addresses that later are going to be published instead of an IP address. And we're again, and then optionally, this is a very useful utility. Um, this utility should only go in here if you are willing to kind of dox your home IP address to your peers. So this will not, if you put this in there, it means that your node will decide, is my peer a Tor peer? And if yes, I connect through the Tor network. And if my peer is a ClearNet peer, then I will connect directly over ClearNet. And this has some performance improvements. And this allows you to have much shorter, because the Tor network is considered to be a bit slow. Uh, its resources are considered to be a little bit limited. Um, and these exit nodes sometimes behave in wonky ways. So the, um, you can very easily improve your uh, performance of your node, um, especially if you have a lot of channels. Um, if I, um, who can I, who can I mute? Um, I just had a quick I question. Can, uh, yeah, please. Um, the uh, dumb question, well, how, how do I paste into that? Uh, text file there. I'm just trying to copy and paste yeah, those. Um, so, on, so yes, because you cannot do the control C and the control V. Um, so what works for me is to do the right click and then paste. And the other thing that works for me is if your computer or if your mouse oh. has a middle button, the middle button is also usually um, pasting. So I guess the cut buffer is only from within that program within Nano. Um, yeah, okay. because the because when you're pasting on your laptop, you don't you're using the clipboard of your laptop, and the terminal in this case cannot read your clipboard from your laptop because you're kind of looking through a window into a different machine. Well, I'm doing it all on the same machine, but it just um, that yeah. If you're doing it on the same machine. I don't know under what circumstances you'd be able to to then read it. The yeah, um, the right click paste worked, but the control yeah. U wasn't open. Yeah. So, anyways, it's all good. It's working. Yeah, yeah. Um, there probably is a way to, for example, here like inside of that, you can probably use this here to to cut and then to paste. Yeah, that works, but only from inside of this. So if you're cutting and pasting from inside that file that you're currently editing, then that seems to work. So in this case, I'm going to run my LitD on a uh, VPS. And so I'm fine with that IP address being public. It doesn't really point to my house. It points to somebody else's data center. And um, I don't feel like I need to keep this a secret. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use this lnd.tor.skip proxy clear net target. And the other thing that I can do, maybe I remove this, for example, and then call this 
incoming connections. Then I can also do a, um, what was the command? I had here somewhere the full configuration file. Where did I paste this? There was a way, um, there's a way that I can here add and later then publish also my IP address. Um, let me stop, just look at this, lmd.conf. And it's called extra IP, I think. External IP, that's the correct one. So here I can add external IP. And if I add then, again, the this is my notes external IP, 172.81.181.220. Uh, so now later when I start LND, it is going to use the configuration, uh, the Tor configuration to generate a onion address. And it is going to also announce the IP that I type in here. So I can also, if I wanted to make another line and say external IP, and then type in the, um, the IPv6, which I do have somewhere. Um, here add IPv6 here. I'll look it up later. I, cop uh, I save this, I close this, and now just for testing, I'm going to open um, ha. And you see, I made a mistake because the configuration in this case has to be called not external IP, but lnd.external IP. And now let D, we'll find another Tor general error. Okay, so I cannot read my comment. So in this case, I'm gonna also have to add this later. And this is because I earlier was able to, didn't properly, probably is already running somewhere in the background, but can I find this here? It's either not, it's either still running in the background or it doesn't properly shut down when I um, ran it earlier. Um, so then often the, the way to fix this, if the program doesn't properly shut down um, because it crashed in a weird way is to just reboot the computer, which is, not ideal. Um, but somehow, if this works, then we miraculously once again finish on time. Um, and then the only thing that's still worth mentioning is that we can also configure our Bitcoin core to use the proxy, which is great if you want to hide from your internet service provider that you are running Bitcoin, or if you want to hide from your peers what your home IP address is, because you're connecting kind of to random Bitcoin peers in a network. Uh, so random other people, and they can of course locally just keep a, a list of who is, of, of which IP address connect to them. And if uh, if you were in a place where running Bitcoin were like highly illegal, then um, you would, then this information might be used against you. Um, so we can, no, no. Bitcoin conf, since Bitcoin is not running, we might as well add it now. Um, here at the very bottom, we can also add a new section called Tor and then just use this proxy service that we installed. So now all the connections are gonna be made through this proxy, uh, which might mean things are gonna be a bit slower, but it also will mean that now our peers no longer see our IP address, which yeah, in my case, since I'm running on a since I'm running on a server, it doesn't really matter. 
but if you really wanted to like shield all this information then the options are there so bitcoin d is starting again it's still verifying it's still july 2020 and now to start the d let's hope this works um yeah so we're now starting we're again coming to the point where it's asking us to input our password and here i am just going to try and see it's probably going to so every time in the future you start the D, you're going to have to unlock the pass unlock the wallet um and let's hope this was the password i already forgot which one i was using yes um so you see uh, here we can see what was what was happening um the once so this is the last message we saw waiting for the encryption password um, then it opened the wallet uh, it knows it's uh, it's supposed to connect to bitcoin um, and here what's happening here is unable to create partial chain control um, so it means um, it's unable to connect to bitcoin d and that's not surprising at all because bitcoin d is still in the process of starting and it's still in the process of syncing and while it's in that stage we aren't able to um, properly use it so um perfectly on time this is where we um this is where we finish this week's session we have lnd installed including all the packages around it we have it configured to connect to Bitcoin D. Um, we have Tor installed and we have uh, Tor configured with LND as well. And um, if there's some uh, if there's some questions open, then you may ask now or ask later in the chat. In this case, uh, thank you all for joining. Um, all luck with good luck with the next with it, with this step, and the yeah, instructions for what to then actually do with L and D once it's running. I'll um, I'll upload them this weekend, um, but relatively simple. We're going to just start with um, the useful commands in L and D. How do you check your own public key how do you check if you can connect to your own node how do you check if um how do you how do you create an address how do you deposit some funds into it and then most importantly what information do you have to send me for me to open a channel to you um enjoy the rest of your evening bye